Sunflower Hill community, friends, program participants. It's Teacher Becca coming to you from my home again. And I'm really excited that you've chosen to spend some time with me today because I have a really fun and really cool looking craft to share with you today for our activity. Today, we are going to be using some traditional items found around your home um, to create something that's really pretty and really cool for people to look at. It's plastic flower art. And what I really like about this is that the supplies that we're using are pretty common household items. I didn't have to leave the house today to find any of these things. I went on a little scavenger hunt to see what I had. Um, and I'm gonna show you what I'm going to use and throughout this talk together, I will offer a couple different substitutions. So if you don't have a plastic bottle, for example, around your house, um, I can give you something else that you could substitute in its place. Um, and hopefully by the end of this time, you'll have everything you need and you will create something really lovely to share. Um, another thing I like about the plastic flower art for today is that you can put it anywhere. We are going to create it so that it will be weatherproof so that if you'd like to put it outdoors in a garden or a potted flower or just in your yard in the grass somewhere by the sidewalk perhaps, you could do that and it should hold up to rain or heat um, the elements. However, you could also just keep it indoors. Maybe you were in an apartment and you don't have a shared grass space that you could go out to. Um, putting it inside um, in a pot in your kitchen would look really lovely. It also look really cool in a little vase um, next to your bathroom sink to brighten your morning. Um, so lots of uses across the board. So let's get started. For today's activity, you are going to need plastic bottles that have been emptied, cleaned, and dried. You'll need a pair of scissors, some acrylic paint is preferred, paint brushes, straws or plastic forks to be your stem, some tape or hot glue, as well as Mod Podge if you would prefer to seal it for weatherproofing. You might also consider having a paper towel or table covering such as a brown paper bag or newspaper to protect your surface from getting dirty. Now that we've gathered everything we need, um, let's get started on making our flowers. So you're going to select which plastic bottle you would like to use. Um, I am going to show you using a Gatorade bottle, um, but this is a Lipton iced tea plastic container. Maybe you have a water bottle lying around that's plastic. Anything will work that's roughly this size um, and thin plastic. If you don't have a plastic bottle, maybe you have a clear plastic cup um, or a red solo cup perhaps that you could cut as well. Um, and then you would just paint, if it's a red solo cup, you'd paint on the white portion inside. Um, if it's a clear one, then same thing, you'd, you'd paint on the inside as we do together, but both sides would work. So, plastic bottles. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to use our scissors to cut the top part of our bottle off. You can see this is what it used to look like, and this is what it looks like once I've cut the top off. All right, um, if an adult is with you and this is tricky, for your hand strength, um, you might need to ask assistance for this part, but I think most all the other steps are things that anybody could do on their own, though you're certainly always welcome to invite a friend or a, a family member to assist you. Okay, so we are going to be cutting the top part off. So I'm going to take this off, though I don't think you have to, it's just how I did it. And I'm going to go to this rim right here. On a plastic bottle here, I'd probably go down to um, maybe where the curve begins to get straight, right there, okay? Maybe a little lower if you want to have more something to push on to. Um, and I'm going to go to the side. Kid scissors are not going to work for this. You're going to need something a little bit sharper like regular household scissors. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line my scissors up here and then I'm going to squish, okay? I'm going to turn to the side and you kind of got to hold it. Basically all we're doing here is puncturing a hole we're not cutting the whole thing like this, okay? I'm gonna use my two hands. Okay, good. So, I've got my puncture started, okay? See how there's an opening there? That's all I needed to, to do just now. Next, I'm gonna find that hole and I'm gonna get my scissors to go inside of it. I'm gonna kinda stick my scissors in, okay? And then I'm gonna hold it straight and I'm gonna cut along 
that ridge right in the middle. Okay, I'm just gonna take my time and cut around. Now, when you cut it, it's not gonna be perfectly straight, but that's okay because we are going to even out our petals afterward. So as I'm cutting, I'm just cutting a little bit at a time. I'm not going all the way down my scissor and I'm keeping my hand on it to kind of help me twist the bottle as I cut. All right, I'm getting to the end. I'm gonna set it down so it doesn't go flying across the table. Okay, so bottom part came off. We're done with that. I'm just gonna set it to the side. So now you have the top portion of your bottle, all right? Open like this. Oh, you see it has like lightning on it for Gatorade power. All right, so that is my bottle cut off and you will notice that it is not perfect all the way around. It's got these edges and that's okay because like I said, we're gonna even it out. Um, right now, if you don't want this orange piece on, you can go ahead and kind of pull that off. If you want to leave it on for a little extra color and texture, you can as well. So I went ahead and took mine off. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut some straight up lines from the open end. I'm just going to cut up to where the lip goes, um, gets thicker and goes up this way. It's no longer the thin curve. Um, it depends on how many petals you want. I'm going to go for a five petal. If you want to have more petals, you can cut more lines, but you want to spread out your cuts far enough that you can get a petal here that will um, be big enough to paint or color later, all right? So I'm gonna take mine and I'm just gonna start cutting straight up. And again, I'm using the end of my scissor, the, the small tip, okay? So I cut from the bottom up to the top. You can hardly see it, but it goes all the way up, all right? And then I'm gonna twist it. I'm just gonna go over a little bit more there's no rhyme or reason here. Okay, so that is my first petal. Okay, I'm gonna do that going around and spreading out my cut so I try to get five petals. So why don't you go ahead and do that? That's one. So to get five petals, you're going to need to cut four pieces going up, all right? So there's my five petals, kind of tricky to see here, but there they are. All right, so the next part is we are going to make our petals stand up, okay? So they're going to turn into this, all right? Now the way we're going to do that is we are going to take this one that we just cut and we're going to put the cap side down. And we're just going to fold out and kind of bend down each petal so that they stay down, okay? So why don't you do that? Take each one and just kind of fold around. You're just gonna work all the way around, kind of trying to flatten them out as best you can. Now, this petal is a little bit bigger than my other one, so I had to work a little harder. See, they're not perfect. <laughs> Um, but I did end up with five. Okay, so we're just making sure they're all kind of flattened. All right, got it. This is what it would look like from the side. Okay, this is kind of what I'm holding to show you. Kind of cool. All right, so you might be looking at it right now and thinking that the petals look pretty great. Maybe you like that they have more square um, character to them. Or you might be looking at it and thinking, I'd really like to round those out. So that's what we're going to do now. And the way that you're gonna round it out is you're just gonna to go to the corner of each petal and you're going to use your scissors to kind of give it a bit of a curve. And maybe you have like mine, this top, I didn't, it's kind of jagged. I'm gonna kind of cut that spot off as well so it's not so jagged. So I'm gonna take each petal and I'm just going to kind of curve it. All right. So there's my curved one. It's much smoother than the jagged top and the squared edge. All right. So I'm going to do that on all of my edges working around until I, I like what they look like. Okay. So why don't you guys go ahead, use your scissors, and curve out your petals however you would like. 
Um, if you don't want them to be as curved like this, maybe you like your petals to be more pointy up at the top, perhaps kind of like a sunflower, okay? There's a lot of flowers that have more of a pointed petal. In that case, you're just gonna start a little bit lower, or maybe you wanna start up high in the middle to make it pointed, and then you're gonna curve down. Okay, so you can give it a point from here down and here down. Totally up to you. All right, why don't you go ahead and cut your petals, make them look the way you'd like. And if you have more than one bottle, maybe you don't just wanna make one today, like I am planning to make four or five of them. This is a good chance for you to go ahead, cut the tops off of the other bottles that maybe you'd like to make. Cut the petals and curve the petals for all of the flowers that you would like to make. And what's nice about that is you get all of that step done. And then when we move on to painting and coloring and adding the details, you can do it to all of them at one time. All right, so cut your bottles, cut your petals, and then curve the petals the way you'd like them to look. And we'll meet back here to see what they look like before we paint them and color them. See you soon. Welcome back. How did your flowers turn out? I'm excited to show you mine. Um, I made five. So I have the traditional five petal rounded. Okay, that's what I showed you earlier. I also decided to cut a little bit further down on the bottle, okay, so that I had longer petals on this one, just kind of for variety. So I made this long and skinny. Do you see that? Okay, and I didn't do much to the ends other than I made them a little bit long curved, but I did not point them. All right, so that's another one. I made a five petal with no curving. All right, so it's kind of square, just for some variety in my, in my little plastic flower garden. And then on my last one, you guys came up with this crazy idea. Lots of petals, but then I cut them at an angle. I don't know what flower might look like this, it actually reminds me of a pinwheel that blows in the wind, um, but I thought it was kind of neat. And again, adds a little variety to my plastic flower garden. Um, so while we took a quick little break there, I went ahead and got my paint um, ready to go so that I could dive right in. Now, the best thing to use is acrylic paint. Um, and I had four colors of acrylic paint around my house, but I also had some Crayola kid paint. So I'm gonna also attempt to use that as well. But what we're going to do at the end, because we talked about waterproof, um, now if you don't want your flowers to go outside, then it probably doesn't matter what kind of paint you use, as long as you're not planning to get it wet. I would not suggest watercolor, unless you think that it could look really cool to make it more translucent with watercolor. And again, try not to get it wet later. Um, so I have two different kinds of paint that I'm using, but what I'm gonna do to try to weatherize and waterproof mine at the end is I'm gonna use um, a Mod Podge overlay, and this will help to kind of seal the paint in on the plastic so that if I wanna put it outside, which I do, I'm gonna put a few in my garden um, that I'll show you later. Um, this would be a great final step, and I'll show you how to do that later when we get there. Um, but if you're just gonna keep yours inside and don't plan to get them wet and you don't have Mod Podge, then you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Okay, so I have a plate um, because my containers were hard to dip my brush in. I went ahead and grabbed a plate and spread them out. So these are the colors that I'm working with today. I wonder what colors you guys will do. Hmm. It'll be fun to see how they turn out. I also grabbed a paper towel um, and I've got some paint brushes here of different sizes. Doesn't really matter. Um, so what we're going to do is I wanna be clear about which side you're painting. My suggestion is to paint the underside, okay? The side that is opposite of the cap, all right? In fact, I'm probably gonna hold the cap like this and then paint this way. You could also turn your flowers upside down with the cap down if you feel like painting on the table is easier. I think it might just kind of teeter a little bit. Um, which is why I am planning to hold it in my hand. And then I'm gonna paint over, I put a paper bag down, um, just because I don't want to get my table messy and you probably won't either. So I'm gonna move my extra petals or flowers to the side and get going. So on this one, 
And you can see, if you keep the cap on, it kind of gives it a little color. So this one's orange, so I'm not gonna paint my petals orange on this one so that the orange stands out. If you don't want or don't have your cap, you can also keep it open and then it's just gonna be clear and it's gonna see through whatever is through. Okay, so I'm gonna put mine back on. Get it nice and flat. Okay, so here we go. I don't know what I'm gonna do first. I think maybe I'll do yellow in the middle. Okay, I'm gonna do a yellow in the middle. And the way that I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna start in the center and I'm just gonna kinda brush some on. I am not gonna cover my whole flower in yellow, though you might decide that you want your flower to be one whole solid color. That's where the creativity comes in, you guys. You get to decide. Okay, so I'm just kind of lightly brushing it on around. Okay, so I'm probably gonna make this flower have three colors, three tones. I'm gonna start in the middle, and I'm gonna do yellow. And I'm thinking a blue and purple would be really pretty. So I'm gonna start with yellow in the middle. It's a little fuzzy. And what's probably pretty important is in between your colors, if you are choosing to, to add multiple colors to your petals like I am today, you're probably going to want to let your yellow center dry. Um, the reason that you would want to do that is to avoid your colors bleeding together or running together. So if I put yellow and blue next after my yellow, it could turn it into a different color that maybe I don't want. Or if you did red after your yellow, red and yellow mix together to make, do you know what it mixes? It makes orange, yes. Good job, you guys. Okay, so that's my first layer on this one. All right, I'm making this one a, a yellow center. I think it pops really nicely around the, the orange middle. Okay, so I'm gonna set that one aside to dry, and then I'm gonna pick up another guy and work on it. I think this one is really cool, so I'm really excited to see what I come up with here. Um, I think maybe on this one, I will make the center be, I think I'll make the center on this one be purple. And then I can still use my, my purple um, brush for the next one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around on each of my flowers and paint the first color onto each of them. Then I'm gonna set it aside to dry. And hopefully by the time I go through the first color on all five of my flowers, my yellow one that I started with should be dry enough that I could go ahead and pick it up and add my, my next color to it. Um, if you decide you don't wanna do um, different colors, that's totally fine. Definitely up to you, the artist. Um, maybe on a, a, a flower that has a lot of petals like this, maybe you wanna do every other petal a different color. You'll just wanna count and see how many you have and then see how to space those out the right way or the way that you like it. I'm also noticing as I paint this purple on that it's not very thick and I can kind of see through it, which isn't a bad thing necessarily, it's just not what I expected. So I think that I want mine to be a little deeper purple and not so see-through. So I might even come back on this first layer after it's dried a little bit. Actually, I'm doing it right now even. And I'm going around and adding another thin layer of purple just to try to get it as, as deep of a purple, as dark as a, of a purple as I would like it to be. Um, so why don't you guys go ahead and get your paints, if you haven't already, go ahead and get your paints spread out how you'd like them. Again, I put mine on a paper plate so it was really easy to access them. Maybe you'd like to do that as well. Maybe you have little plastic bowls that you'd like to put it in to help you however you'd like to organize those. This is a great time to go ahead and do that. And then get started on painting your petals. Um, if you're like me and you need to let some of them dry a little bit, go ahead and get started. Set them aside to dry. Maybe go get a little snack while you're waiting. Um, and then we'll come back together and I'll show you what my centerpieces look like when they're dried up. And then we'll, we'll come back 
and then we'll move on to our next one. So there's my purple. Pretty neat. Okay, happy painting and we'll be back soon. Good luck. All right, welcome back. Um, I just finished coloring or painting, excuse me, the inside center component of each of mine. This is my first yellow flower, okay? And it's, it's dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep painting on that one. I did a purple middle, a big yellow center, a green that kind of rises around the edges of the petal. And it's funny, the green is kind of, um, kind of like a yellow almost. And then this blue one is the last one I did. It's got the angled petals. Um, and I had to go back a couple times because my blue was thinned a little bit. So I went over and added. But what I kind of like is that it shows the brush strokes. See that? It kind of gives it some texture. It's really cool. Okay, so next on my yellow one, I was talking about adding um, purples and blues to this one. So I'm gonna add purple as my next layer. Um, and I'm just gonna put that here in the middle, kind of like that. And this is, I went kind of light that first coat just to see how it looked. Um, so now I'm gonna go back and add a little bit more. Now it's kind of thin, all right? So you're kind of seeing through it. It is kind of translucent, which is totally fine. And then you probably noticed as you were painting that you can go back and add more to it if you would like. So I will probably go over each of my petals once, adding kind of a thin layer. And then I'll go back over and add a little bit thicker just to try to give it a little bit more pop color wise. But maybe you will find that on some of yours, you like how it's a light color, that it, it really kind of um, lets the light through and reflects. So there's mine, okay. Um, I wonder what kind of color combinations you came up with. I noticed that in my paint, I don't have any red. Um, I wonder if any of you are using red. Maybe yours will end up looking kind of like a rose. That would be really pretty. I'm not really drawing any certain inspiration for my flowers. I'm just kind of looking at my pretty color palette of paint and thinking about what combinations might look really nice together. Um, and then I'm just gonna kind of go from there. So there it is. I'm gonna go back over it and kind of even out some of the color tones. Um, so, um, the other thing that I wanted to show you is that on my blue petals that are angled, I decided to color half of the petal. See that? And I left the other half of the petal. I'm going to do one other color. So that's kind of just a different way that you might go about it. I didn't do any full color petals. I'm noticing that now. But that's okay because I like lots of color. So why don't you continue on um, with your painting? Um, and maybe you're somebody who's realizing that you don't have paint um, or that you don't have a lot of variety of paint. So I think another way that you could do this instead of paint is using markers at home. Um, markers will give you a lot of a very similar effect and you could do it exactly as we are doing it now. Um, because your marker would be going on plastic, it's likely that it will run a little bit um, and not dry as fast as being soaked up on a paper product. So similar to the way that we are letting our first layer of paint dry, if you choose to use markers, maybe you just want to experiment. Maybe you have paint, but you'd like to add a little bit of marker texture. That could be a really cool um, additional element to really make your petals pop. So why don't you figure out how you're going to proceed continue to add your colors. I'm probably gonna go ahead and finish mine up so that the next time I pop up here on the, on the video, I'll show you what the finished painting looks like. And then we'll move on to adding a stem after we have added Mod Podge to weatherize and um, protect and seal the paint and the art that we did. So go ahead, continue on. Um, take your time. We're in no rush here, so you can always pause me and just start me back up again whenever your petals have all been painted. Um, as I was painting, I was realizing that art is really, really a lot of fun for me to do because it allows me to be creative, um, but it also allows me to relax a little bit. 
Um, I feel like I'm gonna turn on some some relaxing, happy music in the background um, as I continue to paint. Um, so maybe you find that, that art is a really creative way for you to express how you're feeling inside. We've been talking a lot about emotions lately um, in our videos, certainly in my conversations with my family about how we're doing and how we're feeling. So maybe art is one of the ways that you express your joy or maybe even your sadness or your fear. Um, art can be a really great way to show others how we're feeling inside. So I hope that during this time where you are adding creativity to your plastic flowers, that you will think about how you're feeling while you're doing it. Maybe talk with, maybe you're doing it with somebody in your family who's also making petals with you. I hope that you enjoy having a conversation um, with them if that's what you need right now to connect with each other. Or maybe you're doing it like me in a house that's empty and just enjoying being alone and thinking about how I'm feeling all by myself, listening to music and doing something that brings me and hopefully you joy. All right, continue on your painting journey, your marker, your color, creative journey, and we will meet right back and we can show one another what our finished product look like, looks like before we add the sealant and the stems. See you soon. I thought I'd show you how I get my music going. Hey Siri, play happy music. Here are some upbeat beats. Wow, she did a great job selecting some music. I really like this. Welcome back. I hope that you enjoyed um, your relaxing painting time, making your plastic flower petals really stand out with color, whether you chose to use paint or markers or a combination of both. So I thought I would go ahead and show you the different color petal arrangements I came up with, and then I'm gonna explain to you how you can seal it for weatherproofing um, with Mod Podge, okay? So here's one petal flower, got the pink one, got this guy, purple, green, orange, really like this long one, it's going to look really neat out in my garden. Got this blue and yellow guy, he's my kind of pinwheel flower, and then I have a yellow, purple, and blue with an orange center because I kept the cap on. Um, so what you're going to do next is, if you are interested in weatherproofing it and sealing it, um, you're gonna find a Mod Podge, okay? I've been crafting for years, so I have this at my house now. Granted, haven't opened it, it feels like in for years. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and open that guy up. Um, and when you open the Mod Podge, you're going to see that it's um, white, and I don't want you to be alarmed. It's going to go on like a white layer, um, and at first it's going to feel like you're totally covering up the color that you added, um, but it will dry clear. Okay, now I'm going to suggest that you don't do the Mod Podge until your flowers are all completely dry. I'm noticing that a few of mine look like they're still drying, so... 
Um, I'm just gonna show you an example with this guy, the yellow and pink flower, because he is, oop, it's almost totally dry. I'll do that petal last. Um, so you're just gonna get another brush, a paint brush, and it needs to be a clean one, okay? Not one that you just used on your um, painting. Um, and I got one that's dry so that it's not wet. Wow, it's really far down there. I probably should have poured it into a little cup, but that's okay. All right, you're just gonna get some paint on and then you are going to paint over. And I carried some of my paint down into the center of my plastic cup. So whatever is painted, you wanna cover with Mod Podge. Um, so again, it's gonna, let me get a little bit more for you so I can show you who that's a lot. Um, you wanna cover the whole thing up with your Mod Podge. Now, you wanna go over the edge so that it gets a seal around the edge, okay? So I'm gonna paint along the edge as well. Same thing at the top and even down in the middle, just past where it's painted. Okay, now I'm gonna show it to you and it's gonna show that it's kind of painting it on with white, see that? Okay, as I spread it out, it thins a little bit, but it's okay to, to have it be thicker white as long as the whole thing gets covered, okay? Because like I, I told you to begin with, it is going to dry clear. So you just want to make sure that you get those petals nice and covered. Um, and if it's easier for you to feel like the edges have been sealed, um, if you want to flip it over and kind of do the back side edges, you can do that too. Just to make sure that they have been sealed if it's gonna go outdoors. Now, again, if you're choosing not to put yours outside and you don't think it's gonna get wet indoors, you don't have to do this part or maybe you don't have Mod Podge and you just wanna enjoy them inside, that is totally fine. Um, you could just skip this step and then jump back in with me in a moment when we start adding our stems, okay? So, um, if you are choosing to weatherproof yours with Mod Podge like I am, why don't you go ahead and get started? Um, I'm probably, because you notice it's taking some time, um, just like the painting did, I'm probably going to sign off here in a second and I'm going to have my music start playing so I can again relax and enjoy myself. Um, and then we'll, we'll jump back on here once everything's dry or painted with Mod Podge and dried. Okay. So again, this takes a little bit of time so you can pause me and just pick me back up in a little bit when your flowers are ready. Finish painting, color, make sure that they're totally dry. Then you can seal with Mod Podge and let that totally dry. And we'll meet back here again for adding things for our stems. All right, now before you go, I'm gonna give you some ideas of things that you could use for your stems. Um, you could find a colorful straw. This is for a long balloon, and I'm just gonna, I have a long one, I'll probably cut it in half so that I have a long plastic thing that's weatherproofed, okay? So you could use a straw. You could use, I'm gonna show you how you can use plastic fork or spoon. A fork is great because if you're gonna be sticking it into the ground, it's gonna give it some, some holding. Okay, so a plastic fork would work well. Um, I'm also gonna show you an example of how you can do it with an extra pencil lying around. We always have extra pencils. My kids get them for little birthday gifts in their party favors. So you can use a wooden pencil as well. All right, so why don't you go ahead and finish up your painting in your Mod Podge. Um, and then depending on how many flowers you've made, why don't you go ahead and figure out what kind of a stem you would like to use. Straws, plastic fork, would work or a pencil um, and then we'll meet back here together and I'll show you how to finish up our project so we can go put them on display either in your house or in your yard. See you soon! All right welcome back. I can't wait to see what your flowers look like. Mine are drying pretty nicely. I've got three of them Mod Podge so I thought I'll just go ahead and show you what it looks like to add the stems. So before we um, finished off a moment ago, I gave you a couple options for what you could add as your stem. The first one was a long straw um, or a short straw. Mine is just really long. It's from a balloon. Um, so I'm just cutting it in half. So what I'm gonna do, if you decide that what you have is a little bit too long, you can do what I'm gonna do and just cut it in half with your scissors. 
There we go. Okay, so straw, that's one option. The other option is a plastic fork. Again, we said a fork was great because it can um, go down into the soil um, or the ground if you're choosing to put it outdoors. Um, the final option was just a pencil. Okay, so I'm gonna show you, the first option is with a fork and I just used tape, all right? So that's your first option. So here is one of my flowers and I chose to put my stem here in between two petals. You could also put it, instead of between, you could put it straight behind one if you would like. I just liked the way that it looked this way. Um, and what I did is I just added some clear tape across here and maybe a little extra on the sides to give it extra secure hold. And here you go. And I'm gonna go and stick it outside. You might choose to put it in a vase. Okay, with the others. Not that base, it doesn't work very well. Okay. Um, for the straw, you could tape it as well. Um, another option is if, um, hot glue, which I'm not gonna get out right now, but hot glue would probably be the, the strongest hold. Um, but anytime you're using hot glue, you need to be very careful. So if working with something that's really hot and it could potentially burn you is not something that's great for you to do, um, try to find somebody who can help you or use your tape. I'm gonna turn my flower upside down so I don't have to hold it right now. Get a piece of tape. I'm gonna hold it in between my petals and then I'm just gonna add my piece of tape. Now the beauty of clear tape is that you're really not gonna see it much from the front. Um, and these flowers, because of, for mine, they're gonna go outdoors, they're, people aren't gonna be right up next to them, so they're not even gonna notice that there's tape on there. Okay, so that's just one piece of tape. I might go back and add another one just to secure it down, but that's how it goes. And this is the one that I didn't put my cap on. So you've got a couple different options. You've got your straw, your plastic fork, okay? so. Here are my finished products. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna walk around in my garden and I'm gonna take a look at where I think these flowers might make it look really pretty. Maybe a potted plant on my front step, maybe by my vegetable garden, um, maybe in a vase in my bathroom. Who knows where they will show up and I can move them around. Well, I hope that you guys enjoyed joining me for another Thursday activity. Um, and that your plastic flowers turned out beautifully, that you're so happy with them, and that when you look at them, they bring you joy, because that's what it's all about. Um, I hope that I'll see you here again soon, and that we'll get to craft and create something else together then. Have a great day, bye-bye. Where did you choose to display your plastic flower art? Maybe on the stovetop in the kitchen, perhaps on a desk, about next to your bedside table so when you wake up you see it in the morning. Maybe it's out front in a potted plant for the neighbors to enjoy as well or even in your garden to spruce up the vegetables and flowers already growing there. We hope you'll share with us a photo of where your flower art is displayed and where it can bring you and others joy.